Okay, so we'll count from three. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. <laughs> All right, uh, so this is near Automele. Oh my <laughs> lord. See, Vuljan, I intentionally didn't tell you that You've earlier. You've been saving that all day. <laughs> Dude, it was Bob who came up with that, actually. Don't you want to talk about the agave farmer? Jeez. I, I thought the joke was, was better. <laughs> yes, this is Juan. He's an agave farmer. This is a, a game. It's a Metroidvania called Guacamele. Uh, I'll be running 100% today rather than any percent that I ran last summer. But before I say much else, I need to immediately jump into a glitch explanation, which may be familiar. The glitch I'm about to do is called the Select Door Glitch, or SDG, and it looks like this. First try, easy. First try. It is actually frame perfect. So if you're not sure what just happened, that's a bit of menu manipulation, where I enter a door and open the map on the same frame. The net result is that menus are going to be broken in some very useful ways. Specifically, I'm going to be able to quit the game in a bunch of different locations, and rather than quitting, the game's going to teleport me. The reason that happens, in a nutshell, is that this game treats the main menu as a different scene in the game, just like a different location. And so when I quit the game, it tries to take me to the main menu, but through that glitch, and I don't really know why on a technical level this works, but by doing that glitch, I've now tricked the game into thinking the main menu is somewhere else. So right here in this opening cutscene, you see Kalaka, the main villain of the game, along with some other people that you'll get to see again. And I get killed, like any good speedrun. I'm going to wake up in the dead world and then pause and quit the game, because I'm a big quitter, as Willigen mentioned. Again, there it like is. any good speedrun. <laughs> but I didn't quit the game. I spawned right outside the, uh, the little mansion. And that little trick right there only saved about 8 to 10 seconds of running. But over the course of the run, it saves... I don't know how much it saves. It's enough that we don't measure it. It's just a lot. Time. It's an infinite amount of time. <laughs> Uh, so when do you guys want to mention what I'm getting now and what this is going to do? Yeah, sure. So this is sort of the beginning of unlocking all of our uh, luchador power-ups. Right now we're just sort of normal one. All we can do is run. Now we're going to gain the ability to roll, and we're going to start being able to fight and unlock a lot of the sort of Street Fighter-esque combo fighting potential that we're going to be using for most of this run. Mm -hmm. You'll also notice a graphical glitch where when I'm standing in a normal pose, I am normal Juan, and when I do luchador moves like rolling or punching, I am uh, luchador Juan. That graphical glitch is due to the selector glitch, and it won't last for very much longer, but I guess if you enjoy graphical glitches, you get to, you get to enjoy this for a little while. Uh, you also get your first taste of combat in this arena. You can see me punch some things and throw some people. I can also do dodge rolls. If you ever see a blue outline around my character, it means that I'm dodging. Uh, we'll say more about... Oh, that was a sick dodge. Wasn't it? Dude, these guys are so good at dodging. Uh, you'll get to hear more about all of this. Fair warning in advance, uh, which maybe we should have said earlier. This run is very, uh, very, very front-loaded in terms of commentary, so bear with us while we try to cover a lot of things at once. Uh, speaking of commentary, I mentioned that I'm running 100%. And I'm sure everyone watching this is familiar with 100% categories, especially for Metroidvania. In fact, this is not the first 100% Metroidvania we've seen today. But uh, this game's definition of 100% is a little bit different than you might expect. As speedrunners, we define 100% the way that the game defines it, which is it includes a set list of things. Number one is all quests. That was the first one called Chicken Wrangling, and those chickens are super random, and so, you know, I'm happy that that quest is over. So that's the first part, is all quests. In addition to that, I'm going to need to pick up all skills, which I need to get anyway. And I need to break open every chest and unlock the good ending of the game. And if you didn't remember all of that, don't worry, we'll come back to it in pieces. Uh, you also get to see some of the basic movement. We'll go into movement tech in a moment. First, I need to equip a new costume. So what's the costume I'm putting on, guys? So this is the L.A. Brihe costume, which is... Uh basically a risk slash reward kind of thing where he's going to deal double damage and also take double damage. So it makes it a lot more risky. Uh, any enemies hitting him are going to be significantly more lethal, but he will also kill everything a lot faster and save a ton of time over the course of the run. Uh, you might notice that he is a female version of this costume. It's just faster to go to her rather than the male version. More menu clicks. Right, um, and I should apologize. I think last summer when I did this run, I called it the Alahebra costume, so I pronounced it wrong the entire run. I'm sorry for anyone that was upset by that, <laughs> like me, for example. Uh, we're in the forest now. Uh, like most areas of this game, you'll be seeing it multiple times as I come back to complete things as 100% category. But um, more notably, there's some movement tech going on. Specifically, right now I'm doing a bunch of roll jumps. Rolling in this game can be useful for dodging, which you've already seen, but it also happens to be faster horizontally than running. And if I do a roll into a jump and then dodge before I hit the ground, I can do this infinite series of roll jumps, which you'll see me doing for roughly the first half of the run or so. I'll be doing it in a bunch of places, but it's especially useful for the first half. 
So you're seeing him in one of our first arenas here. You'll notice that he got locked in on both sides. There's going to be a bunch of these in this game where you're forced into a screen and you can't leave until you've beaten all the enemies. Uh, now, all the enemies in it, they, their behavior once they spawn can be random, but their positions and what enemies spawn is predetermined. So he's going to try and meet a lot of the enemies right as they spawn and catch them in combos before they have a chance to get out of control. All right, and with this, we've reached the objective of the first part of this force, which is a new skill. You acquire skills for the most part in this game by breaking open statues, and then Goatman, who is currently hidden behind the main menu because this is a legitimate run. Um, <laughs> he's really angry at me and makes a bunch of really inappropriate jokes. Uh, this game really does have a good sense of humor. You just don't get to see it unless you can read French really fast. But this first skill is called Rooster Uppercut. By the way, here's some of the flashing lights we mentioned before. And right after I get the skill, I'm going to open up yet another menu, quit the game, which through the magic of selector glitch is going to teleport me all the way back to the beginning of the forest, at which point I'm going to travel back to the starting area and quit again and get teleported to a whole, whole different place. And if you don't understand how that works, don't worry. There's basically no one alive who does except yep. Proton. <laughs> I know how to do it, but I have no idea how it works. Anyway, with this, we're in Santa Lucita, which is, I'd say, the central hub of the game. Like I mentioned in Forest, we'll be returning here many times. Uh, you'll get to see Rooster Uppercut in action first. It's uh, a sure you can attack. It looks like this. There we go. The inputs are a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, the notable thing, I think, about skills in this game is that all of them double as a combat skill and a movement skill. And you'll get to see uses of basically all of them in one form or another. Um, as the run progresses, this jump is impossible. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I'm so bad at this game. So the one back from the chest earlier is actually the harder jump. And <laughs> no, in practice, he missed, he missed the one he just missed and got the hard one every time. <laughs> that always has to happen. Anyway, so this is an area called the Chicken Dojo, run by that lovely fellow in the top left, the Combo Chicken. I have to punch this guy, Poncho Skeletor. Uh, in order to learn how to do these combos. And even though I already know how to do the combos, the reason why I need to complete this uh, little arena, two reasons. First, this counts as a quest, and so I need to complete it. This will not be the last time you see the, the dojo, but I'm only going to complete a few of the combos for right now. Uh, also, if I don't complete this first set right now, there's a giant chicken that blocks my path to the first dungeon of the game, Temple of Rain, which we'll be getting to very shortly. Those combos are pretty trivial, just basic three-hit combo stuff, but when I come back here, quite a bit later in the run, actually, the combos will become quite a bit more precise. My next destination, then, is the Temple of Rain. Uh, on the way, I'm going to pass by an Olmec head. It's like a spirit well in Ori. See, if I didn't compare it to that, you'd <laughs> get mad at me. I would, yeah. Um, essentially, I'm going to unlock these things throughout the world. Another comparison is the cauldrons in Banjo-Kazooie. It's not complex. It's a fast travel mechanism, but it's intended, unlike Selector Glitch. Moving right along, we are now in the Temple of Rain. Uh, what can we expect out of Temple of Rain, you guys? I'm going to go with hail. Hail? Yes, <laughs> you are correct. This is just some very elongated hail. <laughs> well, something that we are going to see for the first time is uh, a mechanic called the, uh, the Dark Realm or the Shadow Realm. or Well, this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but you're going to see these little portals that will allow him to transition into the world of the dead. And uh, that's going to feature throughout this dungeon. And he's going to have to find portals to be able to traverse the two worlds, uh, each of which will have slightly different characteristics of the... the <laughs> oh, stop looking person. Yeah, you... Oh, man. Um, but yeah, he'll need to traverse between the two worlds, and he'll need to find portals to do so. Later in the run, he'll get the ability to uh, transition at will. But for now, not quite. Mm -hmm. This will bring us to another arena, and you'll get to see a new kind of enemy called, uh, they're called Aluxes. They're very, very random enemies. They're very weak, which is nice, uh, but they are very dodgy. They like to jump all over the place and can generally be a pain to destroy. But as Roos mentioned, I know where they're going to spawn, so I can take these guys out right as they spawn. Well, I missed one, but you get the idea. One more here. You'll get to see plenty of these arenas, and... Uh, just as I'm doing them, do keep in mind that I know where the enemies are going to spawn, and I'm doing double damage, and so I can take these guys out very quickly. As uh, mentioned earlier, I'll also be doing roll jumps all over the place. This would be a good time to mention dodge canceling uh, as well, if, we, if one of you guys want to run through that quickly. Yeah, sure. If you'll notice, uh, like Grim said earlier, you will turn blue when you're dodging out of an, a move. The really cool thing about this game, and I think what makes it such a good speedrun, is the game is extremely forgiving with when you can do your dodges out of moves. Like pretty much any time you can dodge out of something and interrupt your animations, and then you can go out of your dodge into other animations very quickly. 
so he can dodge out of his uh, uppercuts and straight into other combos or other movement abilities with uh, very forgiving uh, like leniency in it. So it's going to make some great movement through here. Mm -hmm. This might be a good time to mention chests too. We've already mentioned quests as a criterion for. Notice how he's the singular. Anyway, criterion for 100. percent You've also seen me uh, acquire some skills. There are three kinds of chests, though. There are basic chests which give me gold, and then there are chests which give me health chunks and stamina chunks, which increase my health and stamina respectively. Health is pretty self-explanatory, but if you look in the top uh, left, you can see some yellow squares. Those squares are stamina, and it takes one stamina box to perform any of these special moves. Right now I only have one of them, but I'll be acquiring many more. And this is the first example of uh, some enemies that are exclusive to one dimension or the other. If you've ever seen an enemy in this game that's pure black or pure white, it means that I'm in the wrong dimension to attack it. And as Lula mentioned, later on I'll be able to swap freely, and so the arenas will get a bit more complex in the number of enemies are in one dimension or the other, but for the time being I just have to rely on the portals. So now we're getting the most, single most damaging skill in the game, that is the headbutt with more <laughs> flashing lights. And uh, what you're going to notice now is that uh, the headbutt has kind of a yellow color to it as opposed to the uppercut, which was red. And that's going to allow us to break those yellow blocks. And you're going to see more of that going forward. There's going to be two other skills, and they're going to have corresponding colored blocks, which is a neat little, uh, you know, kind of simple puzzle slash platforming mechanic. Mm -hmm. And if you remember that color coordination of, for example, headbutt breaks yellow, rooster uppercut breaks red, there are also shields that we'll see later in the game that follow the same color scheme. So I guess it's, it's not too difficult to memor memorize. This is a giant monster. <laughs> His name is, uh, I was trying to think of some joke, but I'm bad at it. Ted? It's, Let's go with Ted. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that monster is called Alabrihe. It is the namesake of my costume. And if you didn't get a good look at all his weird scaly features, you'll get to see him again uh, up close and personal pretty soon. I just have to do another arena here. Uh, this arena is uh, another really good example of knowing what's coming next. And given that the hitboxes in this game tend to be pretty over-exaggerated in your favor, uh, it's very, very nice because I can headbutt from pretty far away much farther than I would actually collide with the thing, and I can still take out the enemies. It, it makes the gameplay, in my opinion, more Stop satisfying. Ted. <laughs> Stop. He's just sleeping. Apparently we aren't heavy enough to wake him up. We uh, come to another skill pretty quickly. This skill is called Goat Jump, because of course it is. This game has a sense of humor, but really it's just wall jump. I love how you get them from totally not Chozo statues. No, 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 they're Chuzo. Chuzo. Yes, they're Chuzo. You know, I gotta say, the devs missed an opportunity by not calling them Chorizo statues here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Churro statues. Uh. <laughs> Churro statues, there we go. So something's happening here. What is it? There's a cutscene. I don't know. I can't imagine what it's could be spooky. taking place right now. Nothing. Oh my god, where'd he go? Ted, where have you gone? <laughs> um, we're gonna go f find our good friend. Um, monster head, but on, on the way we're gonna pass through two rooms called acid trip rooms. We call them that just because they are really trippy looking. There's not really more backstory than that. There's also acid in them. Oh yeah, there is, isn't there? I didn't even think about that. I actually literally only realized that for the first time in three years. I think you should be running <laughs> just this early, game. earlier <laughs> today. <laughs> um, Your observation game is on point. <laughs> But yeah, um, in terms of, of story, just so you have an idea of what's going on, I'm heading up to the top of the Temple of Rain because Kalaka, that villain who stole the princess of this game, by the way, um, is trying to perform an evil ritual of some kind, and I'm trying to stop him. Kind of standard story stuff. That's, that's a theme you'll notice in this game. It has a lot of references and memes, and if you pay attention to the background, they might fly by fast since this is a speedrun and I'm trying to go fast. But there are a lot of references, and that's even kind of reflected in the story itself, which is intentionally very deliberate. You know, evil guy kidnapped the princess trying to take over the world. That's about all it is. So who's this character? This is Spider Lady. Actually, her name is Shatabe. It's X apostrophe T-A-B-A-Y, so X to bay, X to baby. You can invent your own pronunciation. Crazy hair lady. The point is that she has crazy hair. Uh, like many, well, I guess we haven't mentioned it, she is a boss in the game. There are a total of four bosses in the game, although unfortunately we'll only be facing three of them. More on that later. What do you mean unfortunately? Well, a flame face is a cool fight, I think. Uh, Probably. I don't know. I haven't I'm not going to lie, I don't remember half. how his fight works <laughs> at <Me> neither. all. <laughs> well, we were talking about this earlier. Like, speedrunners know games, but, like, I know how to speedrun this game, but I don't know anything about this game. You'd be like, hey, how do I do the fight? I'm like, I have no idea. I haven't faced him in a year and a half. <laughs> um... But, but seriously, there is a theme where you end up seeing many of the bosses several times as NPCs before you fight them, and Shatabi there is no exception. Did I make that jump good? 
Um, I'm gonna wait a moment here for my stamina to return. The stamina system in this game is almost like Dark Souls, where it, it does deplete in, in chunks, but as long as I have just a sliver left on the final chunk, I can do a special move. So sometimes you wait until I, or you'll see me wait until I have like one and any amount, or two and any amount. But with this, we have an auto scroller coming up, coming up where I get to run away from Alibrihe. Uh, and this would be a good time for a handful of donations. If you have them. All right, sounds good. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Chicken Supreme that says, Hey Grim, good luck from the Ori Discord. Shoutouts to all the Ori runners in the crowd. Thanks, Chicken. There are a lot of them. We have a $50 donation from Anonymous. First try, SDG, easy every time. Good luck, Grim. I haven't watched a 100% run in a long time, and I'm excited to see what it looks like with what's been discovered. Also, I had to donate for a chance at that sweet guacamole art. You got some sweet dance moves there. I do. Well, I kept joking. I haven't died to this thing just about ever. OK, and it looks like today's no exception, thankfully. GDQ would be the place to die to this, because it's really easy. <laughs> also, if you pay very close attention, you might see a very subtle reference to another popular video game here. I think this is how uh, Mother Brain dies? Yes, that's correct. And if you didn't believe me that that's a reference, the next line that this uh, lady says here is, I'm sorry, Luchador, but your princess is in another castle. But she says it in French, so I don't know how to read it. I don't speak French. <laughs> um, I would say that's the first major chunk of the run done, though, with, with Alibrihe out of the way. My next destination is going to be to go unlock another Olmec head, those intended fast travel mechanism giant gray things. And I'm going to teleport back to Santa Luchita. Well, I'm going to do that in a moment. I just have to break through some blocks on the way there. And then I'm going to eventually be going and talking to another NPC to uh, unlock another important skill of the... Of, of the run. It won't take me long to get there. Santa Luchita, as I mentioned, is an area we'll be seeing a whole bunch of times throughout the run. I just noticed that the Olmec head there, normally he says in English, uh, he reminds you about the 311 rule, but in that he said you can only have like 10 milliliters of something of, it was something localized to French. <laughs> That's actually amazing. I had no idea that was like that. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't notice that either. That's pretty cool. So this is Flame Face. He is a really, really cool boss of the game. He's supposed to be the second boss of the game, but as a spoiler alert, we will not be facing him. And that might come as a surprise because this is, excuse me, this is 100%. But for whatever reason, this game does not measure 100%, or it does not require all bosses in its measurement of 100%. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you, or hopefully I'll remember to pause near the end of the run and prove that I do have 100%. So I'm not trying to bamboozle all of you. So he's not doing his job as a boss. What do you think, should he be fired? Oh my god. <laughs> that one we didn't plan. How long have you been storing that one up? About five seconds. <laughs> uh, I'm so proud of you. Okay, so this is another skill. Um, I, you don't get every skill in the game from breaking statues, but you get most of them. This skill is called Frog Slam. But really it's just a stomp ability and it lets me break green blocks. So now I can break three out of four uh, blocks of different colors. The only one I can't break is blue, and we'll be getting the skill to break that a little bit later in the run. Right here, uh, I could be doing rooster uppercuts to get through these sections more quickly, but I'm intentionally not doing them in order to save my stamina for right here. Uh, and our next destination is an area called the Desierto Caliente, which we'll get to in just a moment after I hopefully don't mess with these. Good. It's called the Desierto Caliente, which stands for Hot Desert. We did look that up in Google to make sure. Because <laughs> Vulgen thought it was Spicy Desert, which would also be a good Yeah, I was, I was confused. In my Shut I'm, up. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick, uh, quick trick called a buffered wall jump. Check this out. I just nice. wall jumped off thin nice. air. That is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> it's the only one in the run, unfortunately. And it's a way to skip about a 30-second arena. You're not supposed to be able to, or you're supposed to have to fall straight down and fight through a bunch of cacti, but thankfully I don't have to. Uh, this desert, I, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but in this desert, uh, we can't do very much right now. We don't have the skills to uh, unlock all the things we need to. And so I'm going to have to, nice. So I'm going to have to come back here later with additional skills. Uh, so for the time being, I'm just going to go from left to right and run through as fast as I possibly can in order to get to the end and get a new skill. On the way, I'm just going to try to do a whole bunch of roll jumps. Uh, one very small movement thing I don't think we mentioned, running on slopes is slower than running on flat ground. Right. So whenever possible, it's not always possible to do it 100%, but I'm going to try to stay in the air above slopes. I think it is worth mentioning really briefly that uh, in this type of run, you know, 100% run, it's fairly common, even in like different games, not just this game in particular, to 
get through the game as quickly as possible, kind of traversing areas and just, you know, getting upgrades and stuff. Actually, I'll let him explain this real quick. Oh, uh, sure. So what we're doing here is shield colors. If you remember my explanation a moment ago of these colored blocks, enemies can have shields as well, and they follow the same color scheme. Uh, shields matter because if an enemy has a shield, it cannot take any damage. You can still punch it and throw it around and kind of rough it up a bit, but you can't uh, actually damage the thing. And as I think I mentioned, you break shield colors using the same moves as you would for the corresponding uh, block. In that arena, there are only three shield colors, red, uh, what is it? Uh, green, red, and yellow. But right. we'll be seeing more of them as the run goes on. Side note, this is my favorite um, arena, but uh, you can finish up what you're saying, Golden. Yeah, so uh, it's fairly common to kind of get through the game and traverse all the areas as quickly as possible. Try to collect all the different skill upgrades that you can to be able to move more quickly and get around more quickly, and then come back later and collect all the stuff that you didn't already collect. So that's what we're seeing here in this run, pretty much. Yeah. Excellent arena, by the way. That's one of the harder ones. Thank you. Yep. There's a small bit of RNG in that arena that can mess it up, but thankfully it worked out uh, pretty well. Oh my goodness, we were tricked. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Sorry, Grim. Looks like your princess is another Castillo tonight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I was there when he practiced that and, <laughs> and Google translated castle to figure out how to, yeah. Um, all horrible puns aside, what's happening here <laughs> God, you guys are distracting me. What's happening here is that uh, Shatabe trapped us in here. If you look at the left wall, you'll notice the entrance is a lot smaller. And Kalaka here essentially says, you are pathetic and not worth my time. So rather than kill you, I'm going to turn you into a chicken. And so here we are as a chicken. There is a lot to say about being a chicken. The first thing is that I'm not actually a chicken. I'm a dragon. I'm a cute, adorable little dragon. Uh, the reason for that is that I am wearing a costume as a human, that Alabrihe costume. And even though I don't think it affects my damage, I'm not sure about that, I don't think it affects my damage as a chicken, it does change my look. Um, and otherwise, there are kind of two more important points about, uh, about being a chicken that I can let you guys run through quickly while I do this. All right, so the main thing is you move the fastest in the game just by being a chicken. Uh, rolling was the second fastest, and that was all he had access to before. And then, of course, just regular running is the slowest. Um, and then the second thing is uh, your damage is garbage and you suck. Like, hey, attacking is worthless. Watch this, watch this. Got him. Yeah, <laughs> take that. But yeah, you don't want to be fighting things as a chicken, and fortunately you won't have to except for one specific time. Yeah, this game's a bit of a troll. It does force you to do uh, one arena as a chicken, but that's okay. It, it, it's only one. Um, as before, I'm going to try to avoid slopes and just kind of jump. There is buffer jumping in this game, by the way, so I can hold A while I'm in the air and jump the frame I hit the ground. And you might want to remember the fact that there is buffer jumping. Oh, also, this is a damage boost. There we go. You might want to remember the fact that there's buffer jumping because it will come into play later for one of, well, I would say my favorite trick in the run, even though it's hard, but we'll get there very, very soon. How's that for a cryptic teaser? <laughs> uh, not much more here is the chicken. I'm just going to progress through the infamous chicken arena is coming up right now. Here it is. There's going to be three enemies, and unfortunately, two of them are luxes. And because they bounce like, uh, like trampolines, I have to... Well, it ends up being fastest and most consistent to try to just hit them when they're on the ground rather than trying to jump after them. And so, uh, because there is RNG in these enemies, you have to hope for the best. And speaking of RNG, this is the plant room. It's super random, and I have enough health to damage boost past these things one time, but I want to try to do it at the correct time. Let's do it now. I don't know whether that was a correct time. I hope it was. That looks like a pretty good one. Oh, oh, God. oh Lord. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> this room is no, we're good. completely we're good. ridiculous. We're good. We're good. This is pain. All right. <laughs> okay, made it through. With that... We're going to talk to a new character. This is El Diablo, otherwise known as the Devil, but he's a chicken. <laughs> and he gives me a magical skill called Poyo Power. Right off the bat, I'm going to try a trick called Highway to Hell, which I got. Easy. Highway to Hell is a small trick that saves a few seconds by letting me move during that guy's dialogue. And otherwise, I'm going to quit the game in a moment. Remember that that won't actually quit. It'll teleport me. And now I get to swap hop. So what's swap hopping? Swap hopping is a infinite jumping technique where, as you can see, you are basically swapping back and forth between chicken and human form. And I don't know 100% the physics behind why it works, but it's abusing those buffer jumps Grim was talking about by allowing you to trick the game into letting you buffer a jump uh, in midair and keep rising up. Mm -hmm. Now, it's 
not individually, like each individual swap hop is not that hard to do. It was probably like five or six frames, but doing a bunch of them fast enough and accurately enough to gain height and not fall down is pretty difficult. And actually pretty physically demanding too, because you have to mash on those buttons fast over and over. It's also awkward which buttons you have to use. If you haven't, you can't see him using the controller there, but like the motion is basically you hold the A button and then you reach across to do left bumper and left trigger and this sequence that's just awful. Like, and you have to move while doing that. So it's really inconvenient. Uh, I may even, maybe later in the run, I'll try holding up the controller to the camera for a moment. I think it's interesting how I have to hold it. Maybe it's, that'll make me miss some. I don't know. It's uncomfortable enough that I relearned this entire run on keyboard instead of controller just because I found it more comfortable to swap up. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard much from our third member of the couch. <laughs> he's, uh, he's very shocked by the events yeah. that are taking place. By he's, the way, he's the strong silent type. Uh, by the way, we're on our way to another boss. This is unrelated to what I'm doing right now, but I did want to mention for anyone who may be concerned about the screen tearing, it is an unfortunate side effect because I have to have VSync turned off for this run. If I don't, uh, there's like two to three frames of input delay, and that just is unacceptable for a run that is this precise, unfortunately. What do you think, Villagen? I think Roos Champ might be a little bored. Oh my God. <laughs> This is a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a boss fight. It's Shatabi. It's a three-phase fight. Phase one begins immediately, and then the other phases are 50% and 25% health. Of note in the first phase is that I'm going to try to juggle her in the air. That's a good spawn. Um, this is more precise than it looks, but if she touches the ground, she's going to teleport away from me. So if I play my cards right and hit her in the right way, I can get through this whole phase without her teleporting. There we go. Beautiful. So that's phase one. Phase two hopefully will be very fast as well. There is RNG on these fights just as well as there are. Uh, wow, that was a terrible sentence. Let me ooh, let me try that again. There's RNG in this fight just like there are for uh, traditional arenas. This last phase introduces shields, but I do know which shields are going to spawn in which uh, location. So there's green. Then red's over here. She's going to teleport. There it is. And then just one more yellow teleport. Yep. There is RNG, but she tends to behave the same way. Come come back here. Nope. <laughs> Come oh, back. Ooh. There we go. That was beautiful. That was pretty good. Nice. Bruce Champ is very, very impressed. <laughs> I can tell without looking. Okay, so as a reward for beating that boss fight, uh, I finally get her heart. <laughs> you told me to say that. Yep. Really, it's Dimension Swap which is a very useful skill. It lets me, as the name implies, freely swap between the living and dead world, which I may call the light and dark world. So it's a very useful skill for the run. It does make my movement more complex because now I am already trying to remain a chicken as much as possible to go as fast as possible in the X direction. I also need to manage the uh, dimension I'm in and I need to swap hop. It so. does keep the run from being one dimensional though. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get any better when you do it live than when you do it in practice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. Uh, with this, we're going to do Pupucho, Pupucho cleanup. Excuse me. Vulgin mentioned that cleanup is an important uh, part of 100% runs, where, generally speaking, you kind of go out of your way to get a bunch of skills, and then you go back and finish everything you missed. Um, and this run is no different. Uh, I won't be completing every area at once, of course, but right now I can completely finish this section. So if you enjoy the Pupucho music, uh, listen closely, because this is the last time you're going to hear it. Just one more quest to go in this section, and it's unfortunately kind of a sad one. I need to go into this house here and go under the floorboards because this child uh, dropped her toy and then for some reason someone built a floor over it. And, and then she died. Yeah. That must have been a really good toy. Oh. <laughs> there, there were some Vs in the background. Did you guys see them? Like, there were six of them. I actually didn't even notice that <laughs> reference ever. <laughs> There's actually a Fez reference. Like, if, if you were to go freeze frame, you can see a Fez reference at the top of the uh, tower. That's not important. What is important is that I'm about to do another piece of 100% that I haven't mentioned. You've already seen uh, quests, you've already seen chests, you've already seen abilities. What you haven't seen yet is any progress towards the good ending. So, again, spoiler alerts. I don't need to say that in a speedrun. Anyway. Um, yeah. This game has, maybe. This game has uh, two endings. In the good ending, you do save the world and defeat Kalaka. However, the princess remains dead. But it turns out that you can go through the game and uh, create a second mask similar to the one that was given to you right off the bat and it takes six mask fragments that you get in these secret areas known as chalk mool they're all very very well hidden and the first one is here at the end of this maze i i want to make the amazing pun but it's no, way too don't, easy don't. Don't. okay although i do have to say that it is kind of amazing that you can actually navigate this while talking because i can't even navigate this while not talking it's, it's 
It yeah. took a lot of practice. And it, <laughs> Update, guys. The maze is still going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the maze. That's the maze. It brings me to an area known as Chalk Mool. This is an area you'll see multiple times, and it gets the first mask piece. Now, if you thought that was hard, the next section is arguably the toughest section of the run. I have to do some very precise timed stuff in the forest, and hopefully I can get it first try. Just kidding. Here's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way that worked, I wasn't lying. You, you're supposed to get to this part by doing some very precise timed movement in the forest, but because of select or glitch, I can teleport myself straight here, and it uh, saves quite a bit of time. As a general rule, when I pick up these mask pieces, you're usually going to see me quit the game immediately afterwards. Uh, that will be true all the way up until the last one, and on the last one we get a surprise, but I won't tell you what it is yet. I think that's how I'm going to keep people watching. I'm just going to like hold off on commentary and explain everything later. <laughs> um, my next destination, I'm going to go back to the forest and unlock uh, a few things that I missed before, like some areas that I couldn't get access to. For instance, I can get up here using swap hopping, and then I can go grab a chest down here uh, using my tiny little chicken self. Um, but mainly I'm heading towards an area known as the Tool Tree. It is the only dungeon of the game that is uh, not a temple. Uh, we'll, be, we'll say more when we get there, which is going to be in just a second, so I guess we're basically going to say more right now. Uh, the Tool Tree is a very, very vertical dungeon that I'm going to do not very much of because I'm a dirty, filthy, cheating speedrunner. Um, but it is home to the run's most complex selector glitch. Check this out. And the only use of the mouse. There we go. Mouse complete. Now, that may not have looked like much, uh, and it may have looked like I just walked in and out of a tree, which is true, but there is a very good reason why I did that. Um, the reason is that, uh, again, I don't really understand the technicals behind this, but using select or glitch, I just change some internal values uh, such that in a moment I'm going to be able to do a very, very useful teleportation. I worked back to the Temple of Rain just to grab one additional chest that I missed, and then I'm going to head back to an area. This might look familiar because I've already been here. Um, but what I'm about to do is not going to make any sense, which is fine because it doesn't make sense to me either. I'm going to turn into a chicken and activate this checkpoint, quit the game, so I'm back at the tool tree, do another select or glitch, there we go, and hit continue this time, spawn back at the Temple of Rain, quit one more time, and I'm now halfway up the tool tree. Of course. Yeah, totally. So would that make this a tool-assisted speedrun, Grim? Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm always impressed. I've always been impressed at your ability to pun. I don't think Vulgen has been as much impressed. Right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of disgust from the other side of the couch even, right now. Even Roosh Champ is just like, I can't believe you made that pun. I just uh, swap hopped over an arena trigger, and this next set of swap hopping is pretty cool. For this one, I'm going to miss it first, RNG manipulation, and then I'm going to come up top and hopefully remain in chicken form. That wasn't actually RNG manipulation. I just was bad. Um, and dodge through it. All right, got the dodge first try. You'll notice that I'm able to repeatedly quit the game and spawn back at that checkpoint. The reason is that remember that the way that the selector glitch works is I've essentially tricked the game into thinking the main menu is somewhere else. And so by doing these menu bugs in these different ways, I can continually reset where that uh, memory pointer points to and uh, allow myself to teleport to all kinds of different locations. And it saves a huge amount of time. Like I can break this chest and just quit, and here I am. Uh, right now, you're also going to see the tallest is that the word for it? The longest series of swap hops in a row to get up to a new skill. There we go. Well, longest series so far. Well, longest right. series so far. Yeah, there's, yep. there's worse. This is a new skill. It's called double jump, and you'll never guess what it does. It gives you twice the jumps. Yes, it absolutely does. <laughs> I'm glad we got, I, I could hear all the Ori guys. Yeah, me too. I was, there. I was waiting for it. <laughs> Um, after I get the skill, I'm going to quit again and just spawn in another place in the tool tree. I have a little bit more to go. Um, as a side note, this next room that I'm going to go in, well, okay, not this one. The room just a little bit below me is one of the most annoying rooms in the game, this one. Uh, it's difficult to move through because your character tends to cling to walls. Uh, this is a room where that I bet a task could do very, very well, but uh, as a human, it's, it's not even a, like a hard room. There's no risk of dying or anything. It's just kind of difficult to pull off sometimes, difficult to move through cleanly. Also, if you pay very close attention, you're about to see another small trick called a wall hop. There you go. That was the only wall hop I'm going to do in the run. Um, do any of you guys want to quickly explain what wall hop is? Uh, I actually don't understand the you know, <laughs> me mechanics behind it sure. I myself. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It requires double jump, and you basically just dodge, roll, uh, dodge off of a wall 
and right after falling off the wall, you use your double jump to be able to jump back onto the wall, and it just gets you a little bit of height, so it allows you to climb a wall without having, like, any of the wall climbing skills, and without having to swap hop. Uh, that was what Guac Runners mostly used before swap hopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, not, a, I'm a scrub, and I just swap hop there. It, it can actually be used in more places. Like, right here, I'm going to swap hop up to the entrance to this mountain known as Sienna Morena. This is something that's also in any percent, by the way, so this may be familiar. I'm going to walk in and notice that my objective changes. That's important, but then I'm just going to quit and spawn back at the tool tree. Uh, again, as is apparently becoming a theme in this run, you may notice that I just entered an area and left again, but because my objective changed, I'm going to be able to do a very important trick that's going to come up very soon. I just have a bit of more completionist stuff to do in the tool tree. This time I'm going to teleport back to Santa Lucita and just go on my merry way. Uh, I'm going to actually end up spawning... One thing I haven't said yet, as I just cut off my own sentence, Santa Lucita is the most quest-dense area in the run, and I'm about to spawn off the longest quest in the game, and, you know, conversely, the longest quest in Santa Lucita. It's called the World's Greatest Enchilada, um, where that lady there wants to bake an enchilada, and I did have to look up that you bake an enchilada. You don't, like, I don't know, cook it or, I don't know, boil it or something. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I, I've never made an enchilada. I'm, I'm, it's not my area of expertise. Our knowledge of the culture. <laughs> it's, it's, perfect. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but I spawned off that quest. Uh, similar to other areas, I will be completing all the quests and getting all the chests and whatnot in Santa Lucita, but I'm not going to do it all in one go. I'm going to do it sort of as efficiently as I can as I move through. Here we are back in the desert, an area you've seen before, but now I can access a new area. What I'm going to do is uh, go talk to an NPC down here back where I passed El Diablo, but now I can pay him a whopping 5,000 gold. We haven't talked about gold much yet. It's not too complex. You get gold in this game and you can buy some things. Um, I'm going to pay him 5,000 gold to open an area that looks suspiciously like a chalk mool door, those areas that give me mask pieces, but this is actually something different. So one, two, three dialogue boxes, and then in we go. Let me take a breath. This area is known as El Infierno. And if you remember the any percent run, the trick I'm about to do is identical to that one, but I'll obviously explain it again anyway. This area I'm in is, uh, is present in the gold edition of the game that I'm running on, but not the vanilla game. It's sort of a DLC area that uh, doesn't contain any bosses or anything, but what it does contain is a series of challenge rooms where you can unlock different costumes and whatnot. None of that's relevant, though. What's relevant is one specific challenge room is going to allow me to trick the game into giving me two skills for free that I don't have to go pick up normally and save myself quite a bit of time. The way it works is that I'm going to go into a room, and the challenge for that room is that I have to kill all the enemies without my special moves, like headbutt and frog slam or whatever. So logically, like imagine you were programming this thing, you would say when the player enters the room, uh, take away all the skills, and when they leave, give them all the skills back. The trick, though, is that the skills that the game gives me back are not necessarily the ones I went in with. Instead, the skills I get back are based on my current objective. And that's why it's very important that I stop to buy the mountain to change my objective. So you'll get to see this room in just a moment. I'm going to step inside and then just spam through some dialogue and then leave. And it's not going to look like anything happened at all. But take my word for it. Uh, internally, I will be given two additional skills that you'll get to see in action pretty soon. So this is the room in question. Four dialogue boxes. And then I'm going to quit the game. And then we get to do something, oh boy, real special. I do believe this is your favorite part of the game, right? It is, yes. <sighs> Fulogen, I'm going to let you kind of launch us off here. Oh, absolutely. So this is the Pollo Thief, or in English, the Chicken Thief. Uh, this is basically a ball-in-a-cup game. Uh, the Chicken Thief cannot be told apart from the other chickens because all chickens look alike, right? I guess. Yes. Uh, so this first two parts are really straightforward. And Grim should have no problems with these. You already picked one correctly. But now right. this one, I'm, I'm just not feeling as confident on it. You know, I lost it already, so uh, I'm going to need some help. Um, if you guys could uh, help me out, Rusin, Rusin um, Cooler. I'm going to go with number one. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's three. I don't trust you. I'm picking two. Okay, I was wrong, too. Oh, we're scrubs. Okay, so, so the rough part about that, by the way, is that when I fail that, I do have to restart all three phases. So I'll do phases one and two again. And... Uh, I just don't know how confident I'm feeling on phase three. Well, that's what you get for not listening to us. I know. It's a, it's a rookie mistake. I won't make that mistake again, except for probably all the other times I fail this. <laughs> Maybe um, we need to enlist some other help. Yeah, I just don't know if, you know, no offense, but you guys just might not be confident enough. Do you think we could get some help from someone else? Well, how about the audience? What do you guys think? One, two, or three? 
Okay, I heard two the loudest. It's that's it. Nice. <laughs> Good job, crowd. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I cannot believe the audience guy. GG. <laughs> what the heck is this? GG crowd. You guys need to be speedrunning oh. guacamole. <laughs> oh my goodness. Guaranteed world record <laughs> right my, there. My role in this run is very, very minimal. Oh. <laughs> I have lost quite a bit of time to that trick. It's, you can track phase three, it's just almost impossible. The game introduces a bunch of new transformations and it's impossible, but we got it through the help of... Um, I'll be honest, uh, I don't know what to do with the commentary from this point forward. Like, how do we go on? I, I don't know. Maybe I, we just make the crowd do it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good plan to me. Um, so I just picked up the first of four ingredients for that uh, enchilada that will be baked by that lady in the hut. Um, before I go back there, I need to do an area called the Caverna del Pollo. Pardon my atrocious accent. Otherwise known as the chicken uh, cavern. This area is a kind of secretive area that's eventually going to lead to a mask piece. And how it's arranged is as a series of vertically stacked uh, arenas. You're supposed to take an elevator to the top and work your way down, or fight your way down, I should say. And then you eventually land on this platform where I am right now, where you, as a reward, get to break open a chest. And the message that just appeared, I don't remember the exact translation, but it's something along the lines of um, the next set of, you know, a door opens or something. Essentially, oops, essentially it unlocks the next set of um, arenas. But because swap hopping exists, I can just come right up to the top of these, and I don't have to do uh, any of the arenas at all. It saves a huge amount of time. And this is one of the best examples, I think, in the game of just how game-breaking swap hopping is. Turns out that the, the ability to climb infinitely is not something the developers intended, shockingly enough. It's also pretty convenient that when you collect the reward, as opposed to when you actually complete the challenge, that's when it gives you the opens the next door. Right. Anyway, so remember that there are six pieces total. I don't know if I said this, but the sixth piece comes after the final boss. So during the rest of the gameplay, I have to collect a total of five pieces. And this is number three. After I get this, I'm going to quit the game and do a bunch of Santa Lucita cleanup, just sort of go through and complete quests and whatnot as fast as I can. So while I'm doing that, this would be another uh, good time for a few donations. All right, sounds good. We have a $25 donation from Odihan that says, Hey there, SGDQ. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Grim, Bruce, and Vuligen. Good luck on your run, Grim. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Thank you, Odie. We have a $13.37 donation from Covert Muffin. Hey, Grim. Greetings from Germany. Great run with great <laughs> commentary. That cardboard cutout of Bruce brings a whole new feeling to this run. Shout out to Quack and other awesome condiments. Apparently, the couch behind us is actually sovereign property of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at the chair to the right of the couch, I guess. Yeah. Um, one very quick note I'll point out is that for whatever reason, certain NPCs in this town I can only talk to as human and others I can talk to as a chicken. So I don't know how that's determined, but at various times you'll just see me uh, swap to a human to talk to someone. That's, that's why. Uh, oops, what am I doing? Here we go. Uh, you can read off a few more. Also, Covert Muffin did believe that um, the chicken thief was totally going to be number one. Don't know how that would have panned out for uh, Covert Muffin. Though, but just a quick ad there. We have a $100 donation from Byrak, who said, had to support during Grimm's run because he'd do it for me. Good luck with the rest of it and save the frames. Thank you, Byrak. Um, I should probably jump back into commentary here. Um, I'm just about done with this quest here. Last ingredients. Right after I get it, I'm going to attempt a trick called a super slide, which you can probably predict what it is. And if I get it, you will immediately know what it is. I just tried to split. <laughs> 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 OK, I, I, I didn't get it. When I. Uh, Whatever, it's a trick that I missed. Uh, I kind of want to move on uh, to the next bit of commentary because next up is, without a doubt, the most difficult platforming section of the run, uh, which is called Treetops. And because it is uh, so difficult, I, I like to talk and everything, but from experience, it's better for me to quiet down, so I'm going to uh, divert to my very skilled couch. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, like you said, this is extremely difficult, and you're immediately going to see why. It's going to combine absolutely everything that we have used so far. It's going to have swap hopping, it's going to have use of the abilities, it's going to have dodge cancels, and a lot of stuff that will either teleport you way back or just outright kill you if you hit it. Now, if you watch this run back in SGDQ 2014, three years ago, uh, Annihilator did this run as well, and uh, sorry, did the good ending run, and he did this area as well, but he had uh, slightly fewer abilities. Uh, despite that, this is still ridiculously hard, and Grimm is going to have to navigate these little sections and get well-timed little, little mistake there. dimension swaps. And unfortunately, if you miss one, it's really easy to just end up having to fall all the way. OK, that's OK. Ooh. 
apparently nerves getting to me or something. Yeah, it's really like if your if your hands are like shaking even the tiniest bit. Good that was Lord, close. that was close. Uh, that can very easily throw you off. That was really close too, but that is planned and uh, practiced movement there. I see some more swap hops here. And now we're coming up to the toughest section. So he's actually gonna go off screen. He's gonna try to swap hop around the saw. Almost, Whoa. almost. Barely. I'll try again. Barely missed it. This but. setup right here is important because if you go too far off screen, it's going to try and warp you back in. So yep. he needs to get just far enough to not hit the saws here, but far enough that he's going to be able to get around them. There we go. And we are done. Very nicely done. Well done. Thank you. Didn't go quite as well as I wanted, but that's okay. We got through it. This yeah. is mask piece number four of five that I can collect during gameplay. So only one to go. Uh, right after I get it, I'm going to quit the game as always. Um, good explanation of that section, by the way. Um, right after this, I'm going to uh, go back to Santa Lucita. Here we are. And this time I'm going to go back to that mountain, Siena Morena, that area I stopped to very briefly just to change my objective, but this time I'm going to complete it. And as opposed to many of the sections in this game, I'm going to complete almost all of this uh, section in one go. Uh, Siena Morena is one of my favorite areas. I think the movement is very, very satisfying. I think it becomes very fluid. You get to really show off swap hopping, which depending on your views on swap hopping, is very cool or very terrible. Um, I, I tend to think it's pretty cool. It's also full of what I'm sure is your favorite enemy in the game, Grim, uh, Chupacabras. Yes, those are my favorite enemies in the game. There's a little dialogue in, in skip that you just did a moment ago, just to go under the dialogue trigger for uh, Jaguar Javier there, who we have never seen before. Mm -hmm. Except, I guess there's the one. Except time. for the time that we saw him. Yeah. We've never yeah. seen him but before. But you see him very briefly. Here's another uh, <laughs> long series of swap hops, by the way. After I got that chest back there, there's kind of two routes. Man, I'm having trouble with my swap hops today. Um, there's kind of two routes that you can take. Uh, you can go off to the right and try a very, very difficult uh, clip, um, which is, I will freely admit, I'm just not very good at. Man, I'm having a lot of trouble with this. Let me kind of focus yeah. for a moment here. I'll just remind you, like, if, if Grim's hands, like, it's really easy to get nervous for a GQ run. Can't imagine why with this, like, giant stage and all that stuff. And it's if your hands are even, like, the tiniest bit shaking, it's awful. So we made it up and around, and I'm going to take an intentional death in this arena. Uh, it may look like I'm being really bad. I promise it's intentional. The reason is that you're supposed to enter this arena from the right side. So when I die, I'm going to respawn on the right side, which happens to be where I want to be. And uh, respawning over there and dying is quite a bit faster than doing the arena. But with this, I'm going to head towards the fifth and final mask piece, which uh, of note in this section, I think it is the most physically taxing part of the run. I have to do something like 70 or 80 swap hops in a row if I do this correctly. Uh, it'll probably be apparent almost immediately what the intended mechanic is here. I'm supposed to use these cycling platforms to work through, but using swap hopping, I can just kind of get through the whole thing. Well, you know, in theory, I can get through the whole thing. Even eventually, before this marathon is over, I'll get through the whole thing. There we go. Nice. There are a total of five rooms, and uh, one, two, three, and five are pretty straightforward. Four is quite a bit more complex because four is the tallest room. So in this room, you're going to see me land on some of these platforms and do some jumping legitimately. There we go. It ends up being faster to do this than to just do a series of uh, swap hop climbs. But with this, we're almost at the end. That room is a bit suboptimal, but that's okay. Just one more room to go, and then we'll be getting the fifth and final uh, mask piece, at least of the ones that I can collect during normal gameplay. And as a reward for getting this, uh, after every previous mask piece, I've immediately quit the game. This one I'm not going to because the game rewards me with something that's very, very special and most importantly is going to make uh, swap hopping a thing of the past until the next run. But for now, it's a thing of the past. So I'm going to wait. You're going to see a dialogue message. There it is. You feel lighter. I do feel lighter. Leave this room and then leave another room, and I now have chicken fly. So from now on, every time I tap A, I just get to fly. I want to emphasize that what I'm doing now is not a glitch, where swap hopping was absolutely a glitch. Uh, this is just a reward uh, that the game gives you for, uh, for unlocking those five mask pieces, and it's going to make my traversal for the rest of the run quite a bit simpler. I do actually really enjoy swap hopping, even though I did uh, have some issues with it today, but I also really like not having to do it. Uh, I'm going to have to wait for stamina here for just a moment. Um, as I mentioned, in this mountain area, I'm going to be continuing through and for the most... Oh, I have to wait for those bones. There we go. I'm going to be continuing through and for the most part completing the whole thing in one 
in one go. So we'll go right up here. Good, I didn't get hit by the bones. And then uh, I get to replace... Swap hopping is physically taxing in its own right. Now I just get to mash A as fast as possible. <laughs> and make hilarious noises. Yeah, again, this is something that... I, no task exists of this game, which is too bad, because I would love to see Chicken flying with a, a, an A press every single frame. He actually skipped an arena there um, by flying over the trigger. Uh, he was able to get over it. He just doesn't want to, you know, fight those guys. He's a little too chicken. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I have time to face palm here. Goat fly, yeah. <laughs> so I just picked up a skill. It's called goat fly. Uh, goat fly is a useful skill that lets me cling onto walls and fly in a direction uh, horizontally as far as I want to go. I'm going to immediately try a trick called a hyperfly. Let's see if I can get it. Good, I got it. Hyperfly, thank you. Hyperfly is a trick where I can double jump out of my hyperfly, which moves me very, very fast horizontally, and then immediately swap to a chicken, and I can uh, just start controlling my height vertically as well as going very, very fast horizontally. You'll get to see a whole bunch of these. Many of them will be outside to cover large distances, but even indoors, it ends up being faster to set up and do uh, hyperflies all over the place. So if you like this trick, you'll get to see it a whole bunch more times. Um, but for right now, there's not too much left in the mountain. I'm just going to continue on, get a chest, and then fly past what is supposed to be a pretty difficult uh, dimension swapping goat flying puzzle, which you'll get to see in just a second. It's right I think here. it's really cool that the combat and a lot of the platforming is so dynamic in this that even with uh, swap hopping and goat fly, like the ability to literally fly in a platformer doesn't actually just break the run wide open. It's still very interesting. I agree. I agree. So next up is another boss fight. I think I mentioned this. There are a total of four boss fights, uh, fights but we're going to be skipping Flame Face. And so this is supposed to be the third boss fight, but we're doing a second. Uh, in my opinion, Javier Jaguar, or Jaguar Javier, I don't remember the ordering. Uh, I usually call him Puma Man. He is, in my opinion, the most uh, random boss fight in the game. You'll get to see him in just a moment, but the reason why he's difficult and random is that he can have one of three different shield colors, which he tends to cycle among pretty randomly and he can be in either the living or dead world, and he dodges randomly, and he does fire attacks. And as a rule in this game, fire attacks are completely undodgeable. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna be trying to get headbutts and whatnot all the time because as Vulagen mentioned earlier, headbutts are the most uh, damaging attack in the game. You can, see him all, you can see him already just dodging me like crazy, and there's a shield and a dimension swap. Um, one other thing about this fight is when he dies, he has to do this really long crawling animation towards the middle, so hopefully I can kill him towards the middle. That was an pretty good. That was good an fight. amazing fight. When he dies, he has to crawl to the middle very slowly, so ideally you would kill him exactly in the center, but given RNG, that's basically impossible to do consistently. You could try to wait and you know make sure you kill him in the center, but at that point you'd lose more time than you'd save, so it's not worth it. Yeah, that position you got was very, very good. Yeah. So I just flew over an Olmec head, even though it was just barely visible at the bottom of the screen, uh, because I'm going to need to teleport back there later. That place where I just left also happens to be right next to the entrance to the final dungeon of the game, which, as you might expect, I'll be going to last. But first, I have a bunch more cleanup to do, uh, starting with the desert. Uh, now that I have all these skills, I do have every skill in the game now, so this is where the real cleanup phase begins. I'm just going to go back through this as much as I can. This plant room might look familiar. Thankfully, this time I can damage boost uh, three times. Well, I'm sorry, I can damage boost two times and stay alive. I think I've been able to damage boost three times like once, but I'm not going not gonna to risk it. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue through. You're going to see a whole bunch of uh, hyperflies, some quick damage boosts. There's kind of a swag dodge coming up. Let me see if I can get it. Here it is. Well, in, after this animation, it'll, it'll be coming up in just a second. There it is. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Um, otherwise, I think this would be another good time for a few donations. There's not too much unique that's happening now. I'm just going to go uh, complete some things. All right. We do have a $500 donation from Anonymous. Very Send. nice. Who says, glad I could donate during this great run of Ori y el Bosque Ciego. That's Ori in the Blind Forest in Spanish. That is what you're playing, right? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm playing. We have another $500 donation from Stigi also. Nice. He says, guacamole is tostada, exactly as I played it. Brilliant game, brilliant event, and MSF always deserves my money. Um, as, as a quick side note, uh, 
You've already seen hyperflies. It is possible to attack a chest and break it open mid hyperflight and keep your fast speed, but it's very difficult to do because you need to be both at the correct height to hit the chest and you need to attack at the right time. And so I tried to do it a moment ago and I missed it. I'll get another opportunity in just a second. I just have to do some more completionist stuff. Uh, you can do another, uh, I'd say maybe two donations. All right, sounds good. We have a $150 donation from our patron who says, never could get that last luchador mask piece. We have a $15 donation from Boulevard Broken. As Guacamole is the first speedrun I've attempted, I had to donate during the run. Such a fun speedrun with insane movement tech, except for swap hopping. No one likes swap hopping. <laughs> Nobody. OK, um, thank you for all the donations so far. Next area is called the Temple of War, and it is skipped entirely in any percent. It's actually interesting. There are a total of four major dungeons in the game, and any percent effectively only does one of them. So that's, I think, one of my favorite things about this category is I get to do some of the cool, uh, try that again, uh, some of the cool dungeons uh, that I missed in any percent. This area is home to Flameface, the boss who will be skipped eternally. We never really get to see him. It also introduces white shields. So you've already seen colored shields plenty of times. Um, but stop dodging. Uh, white shields, you have to hit them four times in order to break them open. Stop what you're doing. Stop dodging. These are also a new type of enemy. And oh my god. The worst enemies. <laughs> stop dodging. <laughs> it's unicorns all over again. Yes, it is. Anyway, almost done with them. You'll get to see plenty more of them. Uh, throughout this section, there'll be a lot of uh, dimension swapping and whatnot. You won't really see so much in the way of like new tech, but I think you get to see all the existing tech in some interesting ways. Um, one of the toughest things for me learning this run was always trying to remember which dimension I have to be in before I get into the next room in order to try to optimize things. There is one small trick I can mention, which is something I've actually already done, but only very briefly. So let me just grab this chest. There it is. In this room over here to the left, you're going to see a bunch of green goop in the ground. When I touch that stuff, it actually won't damage me, but what it does is it teleports me to the last place where I touched solid ground. So what I did is intentionally avoided touching the ground so that I can be teleported back there. It's not a very big time save, but it's something, and you'll see me do that uh, one more time in this temple. This temple also introduces these uh, Christmas ornament enemies, whatever you want to call them, where... <laughs> They always look like Christmas ornaments, don't they? <laughs> like really weird dimensions Christmas ornaments. I don't ornaments. know what kind of Christmas you had at your house, Grim, <laughs> but uh, those do not look like the ones I had. Oh my god, stop your spinning attack. Um, when those enemies ow, spawn in, they start a 10 second uh, cooldown. Uh, and then after those 10 seconds, they explode and deal a huge amount of damage. In any percent, it's enough to one-shot you. Thankfully, because this is 100%, I have a bit more health. Here's the other section by doing that little green goop teleport thing, which I'll try again. It's not too difficult, I just have to you know, make sure I don't touch the ground along the way. There is another new mechanic in the Temple of War as well that you'll get to see pretty soon. There's the teleport, good. Very nice. Yep, so kind of go underneath this, and then... This section, I think, more than any, took uh, quite a bit of practice to memorize. It's harder than you might think to remember what room is coming next, you know, to not just react, but actually know what's coming. So go through this room, and then in the room right after this, you're going to see uh, you're going to start to see these red uh, conveyor belts and saw blades. If I touch those, I take uh, an instantaneous death. And they aren't very da dangerous in that section, but in this section, they're really dangerous. This section that I'm doing right now is made quite a bit easier by uh, having chicken fly, but I still have to not hit any of those. Good. That that, that's really mildly together. terrifying. It's always mildly terrifying. <laughs> we'll be moving right along here. Another chest. Kind of one thing I, I want to kind of make explicit, and this is kind of especially ap applicable in this arena. Way back earlier in the run, in the Temple of Rain, I think it was Vuligen or maybe Roos who mentioned uh, animation canceling. It turns out that you can animation cancel out from more than just movement. You can do something called an infinite attack cycle, where you can attack an enemy with something very powerful like a headbutt, and then rather than letting that enemy fly really far away where you have to go catch them, you can immediately cancel out of it and catch them in a three-hit combo. And because I'm dealing double damage, I end up killing everything super fast anyway, but in theory, you could hit an enemy infinitely um, using that technique. So it becomes very, very useful. One more quick trip. Uh, quick trip. One more quick trip coming up. Quick trick? Yes. Quick, 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 quick trick? <laughs> it's, it's a thing that I'm going to do. I'm about to do a camera glitch. Uh, so the reason is that the room I just passed through, there are a bunch of enemies who queued up attacks. And so if I went back into the room legitimately, they would finish their attacks and hurt me, and I don't want to be hurt. So I can just do a quick uh, camera glitch in order to skip past them. 
Uh, I'd say we could probably read off another uh, maybe one or two donations while I'm doing the rest of the section. Might have been busy. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> By I'll... might, I mean was. <laughs> okay, I'll just I'll just keep fighting these things then. Oh god. Uh, this is a good example of the RNG in play, by the way. Uh, of course, uh, I, in an ideal world, I would want those guys to just stack right up on top of each other. Um, and uh, and then I could take them out quickly. It kind of works perfectly, though, uh, because this room is a rare uh, example of an arena that's an auto-scroller. Ordinarily, every arena, of course, has waves of enemies. And so as a speedrunner, it's in my best interest to take out each wave as fast as possible. But for whatever reason, this, and I think only this arena, at least in the speedrun, all the enemies spawn at a fixed pace, and there's five of them total. So I want to kill the last one as fast as possible, but otherwise I can just, uh, you know, take them out at my, my ledger, basically. One more enemy up here. Um, and then kind of have an awkward length of time, like a few seconds here, and then there's something cool that I want to explain up at the, the top of this arena. In my next set of rooms, I think you really get to see where this uh, run starts to shine and how you can string together some of the um, different movement skills that you have. And for me, that's one of the most satisfying things about running this game. It's just the way that you can fluidly, uh, at least in theory, you can fluidly push everything together. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, something you mentioned earlier was that a lot of the hitboxes are very forgiving in favor of the player. A lot of the movement and timing of combo strings are as well. So the stuff just flows together better than you think that it might originally. So it, it makes the movement and the combos super satisfying in this game. This section right here is also one of my favorite series of stringing together a bunch of different kinds of uh, kinds of moves. I think it looks very fluid and it leads right into another auto scroller. Um, ordinarily, I would give up auto scrollers for donation time, but there is something I want to talk about in this. And this I'm going to throw to the couch. This is an auto scroller. I just have to dodge all these things. If I touch the conveyor belt, I'm instantaneously dead. There is a really dumb strat I can oh. do right at the top that saves about one second. Oh, And boy. I think I'm going to try it one time. Oh, good. Okay, okay so, so yeah, go ahead. Go he's going to get on the wall. He's going to do a, a goat fly through these things and cancel it with a dodge, which is going to allow him to you know, pass through the little spike walls safely. And he's going to try to go climb the far wall, and you're seeing it right now. This is yes. really dumb. Why did you do that? Yes. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> one second. Yeah, if anyone's thinking about running this, don't do that trick. It's not worth it. <laughs> By the way, he just passed through the arena where he would have fought Flameface, whoever that is. Yeah. See, see a Flameface. Um, just about done with this, though. I just need to grab one more chest, and then we're going to go back to the uh, Chicken Dojo. I did mention we'd be coming back here earlier. Before, I did a series of three combos, and I'll be doing four sets of three combos, so a total of 12 combos. Um, the first two sets are pretty straightforward. I'm donating 100 bucks per missed combo here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Uh, so I should just start missing them then. I hope you've been saving up, Bulletin. <laughs> if you ever wanted to know what the hardest part of this run is, you're looking at it right here without question in right. my mind. The reason that this is tricky uh, is that the way that this game detects these combos is, I guess the best word to describe it would be finicky. And sometimes it's finicky against you, and sometimes it's finicky in your favor. You know, you miss combos that you really should have gotten, and sometimes you hit combos that you really should have missed. That was neither. I just missed it. You just tossed me 100 bucks. <laughs> Let's go. No pressure. Oh. I'm not trying to do this. I swear <laughs> I'm not trying to do this. I'm actually trying to hit this one. There it is. All right. Okay, now on this one, I'm going to wait until he gets up and comes to the middle because I need a bit of room to work. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the hardest combo. It can just be very hard to hit these guys in the right way good. Very okay, nice. So there's that one. One more here, and then a total of three more at the end. And the headbutt, good. Okay, that was so good. Three more. As a reward, I'm going to get, what is it, a health chunk, maybe a stamina chunk, health chunk. Okay, so three more combos, and then we'll be done with these forever, at least for now. Just two more. I'm going to wait for this guy to come off the wall just a hair. There he is. All right, one more. I'm going to wait for him to come off the wall again just a bit. From experience, it's better to just take the second or two time loss and wait for it. For whatever reason, this one allows a double jump, and... There we go. Combo. That was late. fantastic. You only cost me two hundred dollars. <laughs> Going to a good cause. Marvel versus Capcom players, where are you at? <laughs> you know, I'm calling shenanigans because some of those combos, there are clearly frames where he could have gotten up and done something to counter you. So let's. Uh... The combos are iffy, but they're done now. Um, with this, there's. We're kind of approaching the end of the run. There's still a bit to go, but we're kind of approaching the end. 
Um, I'm going to grab one additional chest here in the Temple of Rain before going to the forest, and I'm going to do some forest cleanup. Um, before we maybe get too much more, more into this, while I'm doing some of this cleanup, maybe we should talk about that weird face we have on the couch. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Uh, so this is a bit of a, a meme from my channel. It's a, an emote that somebody screen grabbed <laughs> off of one of my streams one time. But uh, originally, I wasn't going to be able to make this GDQ. And so uh, to sort of <laughs> represent me on the couch here, we were, we were going to make this cardboard cutout. But last minute, I managed to snag a ticket. Literally badge 1,600 out of 1,600 after somebody canceled. And so uh, we figured, why not go ahead and make the couch one more full, or one, uh, one person extra. Mm. Dude, that thing took me like two hours. Dude, you went above and beyond on this. <laughs> Dude, I took a file to the edges. I smoothed it out. Like, I wanted it to look really pretty. <laughs> I, I was really, really proud of it. My cat was, like, almost eating the, like, the filings of the whatever. <laughs> I'm no cat expert, but I can't imagine that would have been very good fun. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that we're playing a video game. Okay. By the way, I'm in, I'm in forest now. Uh, if you paid close attention, you'll notice that I actually opened up some of these side rooms way earlier in the run. This is the last one here, and then just a little bit more to go in Forest before we're on to the last dungeon of the game. So we are sort of in the final stretch here. Uh, the last dungeon in itself has its fair number of challenges, but we're kind of approaching the end. Uh, you get to see a lot of these Hyperflies as well. I did mention that we'd be using a lot of them, and I, and I was not joking. They're just so quick that you end up using them all over the place but just a little bit more in the forest. This area will look familiar as well. Uh, it's actually kind of way back at the start of the game where I got my very first skill. That was, that was a long time ago. I'm um, way back at the start of the game where I picked up Rooster Uppercuts. One more chest down here and then one more up top. And then we get to go to the Grand Temple, which is, well, it's, it's a difficult area. We'll, we'll say more about that in, in just a moment. There's a fair bit to say about the, the Grand Temple. It seriously does feel weird to not go split. I keep trying to to press one on the thumb. Maybe take away the keyboard. That might be that might be smart. Anyway, so the final dungeon of the game is called the Grand Temple. And for anyone who may recall any percent, we do something called the Grand Temple Skip. And as the name implies, you end up going into the Grand Temple and doing some weird shenanigans, and you teleport all the way to the top, effectively skipping the entire thing. However, this is 100%, so I need to go through not all of it, but a large part of the dungeon to grab a bunch of things. What's interesting is that I'm still going to do a version of the um, I'm still going to do a version of the Grand Temple skip. It just is a bit different. So I waited a moment there to avoid a save trigger, and then after I do this arena, which, as a side note, is one of my least favorite arenas in the game. This one sucks. A lot. Yeah, it does. Get out of here! Please die! Please stop dodging! Um, anyway, when I, see, when I finish up this arena, you're going to see me kind of... Okay, they tend to dodge twice. You're going to see me uh, immediately turn into a chicken and hug the uh, bottom right wall. There is a very specific reason for that. Um, the reason is that, uh, similar to right at the beginning, I need to make sure that I'm avoiding... Oh my goodness, these oh guys my are... Good. They, are really? they are not cooperating. Okay, there All we right. go. So now I'm going to remain a chicken, stay in the bottom left in order to avoid a save trigger. There's one more save trigger I'm going to be avoiding in just a moment. I just have to do a bit of... A uh, bit of movement first. I'm going to grab a chest here in an interesting way, which you've actually already seen. There are many chests in this game you can kind of grab from underneath like that. There we go. So there's one more arena up top. I'm going to try to get through this arena as best I can. At this point in the game, to be honest, the arenas get quite difficult. And even with my practicing, I do have some trouble with it. It doesn't help when they dodge out of the way all the time. Stop. <laughs> Let's just try that again. After I finish this arena, you're going to see me turn into a chicken and just hug the uh, hug the right wall, and hopefully, uh, hopefully dodge your arena trigger. We'll find out if I actually did successfully. By the way, as I mentioned, fire attacks are undodgeable, so I need to be very careful with those giant kitty enemies. So I'm going to wait three seconds for the icon to go away, and then go all the way up. Not too much more platforming and whatnot to do before we hit the really interesting moment of the run. Hopefully I don't fail it. I'll find out if I do. more mashing A, like, like in a good speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that inhale. Yeah. Okay, so we're almost done. I have to go fly up here, and then you're going to see me approach a checkpoint. This is similar to the way it works in any percent. You're going to see me approach a checkpoint, this checkpoint, as a chicken, buy an item without activating the checkpoint, quit the game, and I will spawn in Santa Luchita. From here, I need to go up to a door and do a select door glitch and continue. And if I did this correctly, I will now spawn all the way at the top of the Grand Temple. Nice. nice. 
Now, in, thank you. In 80%, that would effectively be the end of the run. Um, but since this is 100%, I need to go back and uh, clear out a bunch of things. First, I have to take out those lightning enemies. Those lightning enemies, by the way, are unique to this dungeon, and they're pretty annoying. So in that room, there's a whole bunch of enemies, but they all die in one shot, so I just had to go clear them out quickly. Otherwise, I'm just going to be continuing through and grabbing everything I missed. There are certainly some challenging rooms in this section, but for the moment, I want to give maybe a time for just a handful of more donations. All right, that sounds good. Let's do, let's see, we have a $50 donation from Joypunk, who says, best puns of SGBQ 2017 right here during Guacamelee on day one. Love it. Donation goes to runner's choice unless it's save the animals. This is a speedrun event. You do have to save the frames. By the way, this is one of the most difficult rooms in the game. I'm trying to get all the way to this chest without touching the water. It's not water, it's acid. All right, good. Well done. Thank you. That, that room, probably more than any other in this entire dungeon, has given me some... Uh, some trouble, but uh, I apologize. A few more donations, if you have them. Absolutely. Uh, we have another $500 donation from Anonymous. Thank you so much, Anonymous. No comment, but thank you. Wow. Overwhelming amount of support. Thank you so much, everyone. A $55 donation from Suds McGee. Love all you do with these runs. Not only are they fun to watch live, but I have weeks worth of YouTube videos of all the runs I can't see. Keep up the good work. Have another $150 donation from Anonymous. Thank you. No comment. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in for a, for, for a, a minute here. Um, I think there, there's going to be... Oops, nailed it. Um, there's going to be one more arena that's coming up, which I, I think is noteworthy. It's the Aluxus Arena, which we'll be hitting in uh, just a moment. If you remember way earlier in the run... Oops, there's one more. <laughs> Um, every arena in this game is 100% consistent. There's RNG on individual enemies, but otherwise I know where they're going to spawn. This arena is the one and only exception. This arena is full of a bunch of Aluxes, and although I know where the Aluxes are going to spawn, they spawn with random shield colors, so I just have to adapt to what they're doing every single time. And given the hoppy, annoying nature of these enemies, I need to just... It can be very, very difficult to, to sort of wrangle them appropriately. And every time they hit you, you tend to just get knocked down. So it, it can be a frustrating section. It, it's, as I said, just difficult to optimize. You kind of just have to you know, deal with the, the hand that you're dealt. Yeah, so you saw him probably looking for some of those enemies with the same shields to cluster up so he could take advantage of that. Right. To this day, I don't really know what the best way to do it. You know, probably optimally you would try to group them together somehow, but it's just so random that that can be very difficult to do. Right. Uh, I'm going to head up here and then do some more uh, kind of more of the same same movement here. It's very important that I have all the stamina that I have in order to do all these series of special moves without having to wait. In something like any percent, not that we do this in any percent, but in any percent, if we were to do this, it would be quite a bit more difficult. We'd have to be much more careful with stamina con uh, conservation, excuse me. Uh, another arena to go down here, which spawns a bunch of those electricity enemies. Uh, I do know where they're going to spawn, and so hopefully, well, okay, they can still dodge. They always dodge. Yep. But hopefully I can take them out very, very quickly. Um, and then there's just one more room below, which happens to be my favorite room of the entire game, because it's just super, super swaggy. Don't do it. All right, one more room down here. It'll just nice take arena. me a second to get there. Thank you. Three of these blocks. One, two, three. All right, now, now check this out. We get the swaggest, that's not a word, dodge of all time. Ooh, yes. <laughs> There, there we go. Uh, nice. <laughs> That's not even hard. I just... <laughs> I was trying to be too showy with it. <laughs> Thanks. The game does expect some pretty precise dodge timing um, on that. This one on the other end is hard. I'm going to try a hyper fly here through a very, very narrow gap. Got it good. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and we're just about done with the Grand Temple. I'm just going to mash A uh, until my A button breaks off and also my hand breaks off. Um, and then break one more chest, which will mark the end of the Grand Temple, and we'll move on to the final boss of the game, Kalaka. And while we're doing that, we have a great opportunity to demonstrate that we have, in fact, collected 100% in the top, top right corner. Yep, there very it nice. is, 100%. All right, let's finish it up. Mm -hmm. It is good to actually complete your category at Games Done Quick. It is, as someone who has had the 99.8% world record <laughs> in a few games. <laughs> it's very, very nice. Um, I'll, I'll say a few things about this boss fight. For anyone familiar with the game casually or from the run last year, it will be... Very, very similar, except I don't have to wear a blindfold this time. 
Um, this is a two-phase boss fight, and in my opinion, phase two is actually the easiest boss fight of the game, whereas phase one is a bit more difficult. Uh, when the fight starts, you're going to see Kalaka disappear, and then he reappears into the world and just takes a slash at me, and it happens very, very quickly. Uh, it's not hard to dodge because you... He always follows the same pattern, even if it's kind of very, very a quick pattern. What's hard is that he can be kind of similar to the, the Puma Man. He can be in either the light world or the dark world and can have one of three different shield colors, and so I have to try to adapt and hit him as quickly as I can. Uh, we generally measure the quality of this fight through wheels on a, well, something you would ride, I guess. Wheeled vehicle. A wheeled vehicle. Yeah, you'd be going ideally for the bicycle, which is two, but... Uh... I got a... That's not what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's phase one down. That was a... It's not even a motorcycle. It's like a car with a sidecar. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a five-wheeled vehicle, is what that was. Um, but we're moving on to the final fight of the game. Uh, this one, in my opinion, is pretty easy because I can walk right up to Kalaka. He will start with a random shield color, one of four colors, or a white shield, but after I take it out, I can just kind of mash him over and over and over and just do as much damage as I can while hopefully dodging it. Tantrums are bad, they're slow, but it's okay. I'm just going to try to do triple hit combos, cancel out of it, do whatever I can to get as much speed as I possibly can. Ow. This way, this is 100%, so you don't die immediately to every hit. It is very, very nice. And he is not giving me a great pattern here. That's okay. Not too much more to go. He'll be done very shortly. If you watch his health bar at the top, he does not have much life left in him. One, that'll do it. Nice. Well done. So that's the final fight of the game. Um, <laughs> time is not called just yet. I need to wait for this central platform with the princess on top to lower down. Um, but then I'll press Y and I'll call out time when it happens. So the run is almost complete. There's only one very, very important thing to do. Do you guys know what it is? Oh, it is the infamous guac dance. Yes, it is. Villagen, are you joining me with the guac dance? Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. You, you, you go first. I'll, I'll be right behind you, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know the couch behind me wants to do the guac dance. Essentially here, I mean, this is like a you know a little 10-second auto-scroller, if you want to call it that. I just have to wait. All so right. in the meantime, you usually do this. You just kind of start to do some stuff. Village, and your guac dance is very stiff. You got to loosen up. <laughs> okay, and ready, and time. Thank you. Now, as the credits are playing out, I want to point out, we did unlock the good ending of the game. So, so far, it looks exactly like the sad ending. The princess is dead here, because even though you defeated Kawaka, she's dead, and Juan is, is very, very sad. I mean, who wouldn't be? However, something amazing is about to happen. Wait for it. There it is. And she's alive. Pogchamp. Pog Sorry, Champ. Bruce Champ. Bruce Champ. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. It's actually cool because um, for anyone who has seen the credits for this game or beaten this game casually, the credit sequence that plays is almost identical except that every single scene also has the princess added in. It's just a little bit different and the music is like a little bit more upbeat. It has a few more instrumental lines. I think it's an interesting way to do a, a good ending. Um, but with that, that is Guacamelee 100%. Uh, percent. I think it's a very enjoyable run. All of them. All yeah. the percents. All of the percents. Thank you very Great much. Great run, to, dude. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the help. I runs are really hard to commentate on your own. Um, thank you very much from Vulgen and Roos, and most importantly, Roos Champ over there. <laughs> most most important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a uh, one fifteen thirty three. By the way. Really? Yeah. That's, yep. that's pretty good. That was a really good. One fifteen thirty three is within a minute on my PB. I yeah. think. That's great. That's pretty good. I mean, that was with second try chicken thief too. Yeah. And a couple of drops on treetops too. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, thank you, of course, to all the Ori friends and other friends and everyone who uh, supported me through all this and uh, the donators and everything. Um, and we'll be uh, we'll be ending here and moving on to uh, I think it's oh, oh yeah. So if you like menus, because there's a lot of them in this run, oh, you're really gonna like Okami. So stick around for that. All right, thank you very much.